This next session is on Secure IO, and I, I just want to preface this with a quick background here. Uh, when we came in, we had multiple pro, uh, multiple proposals talking about Secure IO. So we, in the spirit of LPC, we just combined them all, and I'm trying. We are trying to force all of those guys to come and talk <laughs> with each other and, and bring it up. So I'm going to ask for Stefan, Samuel. Jeremy and Tom and Dan. Let's try to get you guys up here so we have a mic to pass between you. Uh, and then the throw box can go around. And Stefan, I think you get us going. <laughs> okay, so I want to shed some light on how the Astro 90 guys do this. Um, so. As you might or might not be aware that we do things quite differently. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll keep myself telling that over and over. Um, but we encrypt the guest completely. So the, the guest kernel, the guest image RFS and the parameters are encrypted with a private key or with a public key and the cr private corresponding key is baked into the hardware. And the uh, Hardware is part of the trusted computing uh, base. And so we trust our firmware as well. So we don't really have to attest the firmware, but that's a different topic. And the part that's not trusted is the only the hypervisor and KVM stuff. And again, we trust ourselves as the guest. The main point is our image is encrypted. And for secure IO, we also, as a completely virtualized platform, trust our devices that are plugged in, as these are only trusted devices that are plugged in. And if you have a non-trusted device or a non-valid device that's plugged in, the firmware will reject using it. So the uh, device is already trusted. And so we have different I.O. devices that we want to create, have an additional layer of security, mostly or only cryptographic accelerators and uh, EP11 <coughs> cryptographic coprocessors. And the issue here is that especially these EP11 coprocessors have key material that's bound to a session and the session has to be handled out. And for non-confidential I.O., uh, the host can inject that um, key handling um, session. So we need to find a way around that. And therefore, we have two steps. First one would be binding the resource exclusively to the guest. That's done via firmware. So, and we trust the firmware, so this is a secure process. It's just a simple process of sending a CPU instruction. So you don't need to accept that in the device explicitly. So you don't need to explicitly accept the device, the coprocessor, no. in the VM. No. So if there there is a device available, we know this device can be trusted. For the decision of the VM, uh, yeah, like, the decision of the VM, you Thing which we know which we are the device is trusted, but who are we? Because you know it, it it it's it's it shouldn't be up to VM to decide, you know, this is the device, this is its measurement certificates, do I trust this or not? Yeah. There there is a way uh, for the for the guest to, to to verify that this device was signed by IBM. <laughs> which I did not cover because that's for IO and I have looked more of the way from the conversion to computing side. So, so, so the tenant of the VM has a way in advance to kind of communicate what type of device, out of bound communication, yep. what type of device is trusted. See that this is a signed up device. And the other part we do is the association step, and that's more or less create a secure channel to to the EP11 adapter, and create a session. And this session for sake of simplicity can be seen for now as a TLS session more or less. But it's not, but it's the same idea. 
and all communication is done via this session material and uh, this and this all session and key material is bound to that session and if a kvm want to intercept it can, uh, he would would see only garbage and more or less that's from from the s side side i just wanted to give it like a presentation or an overview that we do things differently and probably uh you do you have like different angels of what what you want to do so that's more or less stuff i want to talk about okay so i'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the risk 5 uh secure io uh, definitions and i have a couple of slides but i've been asked to uh, present tdisp first uh, we're going to talk about tdisp and this is I, I have five minutes to do all this so bear with me <laughs> the td state machine is a, 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 a trusted io uh, specification and the state machine that you see it here is uh, a view from the from the the device itself so within the device each and every virtual function uh, for those who are familiar with the uh, sorry e is going to follow this this state machine unlocked is basically the where how the the virtual function is at reset then you lock it once you actually want to uh, want to pass it to a, a, a VM. The VM gets to see the device, and when it accepts the device, it asks the, the, your firmware, your PSP, your TSM, whatever you want to call it, to move the VF from locked to run. By, by that, it means to say, I'm accepting this device, and now I want to actually use it and, and run it. So you have those three states. If, for example, in locked, when in lock mode, you assign the, 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 the device into the VM. And if the host VMM tries to mess up with the configuration of your, or your device, it's going to switch back to error state. And you cannot, it, 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 it won't do any confidential transfer, uh, DMA into your memory or anything like this. So in, either, in both locked and run states, if anything happens with your, with your device, if the host tries to mess with it, or anyone but the confidential VM tries to mess with it, it switched to error state and all confidential data is Wiped out. Uh, so by device, do I mean card or, or function? I think we have to distinguish the two. By device, I mean function. So it's called a TDI or virtual function, and it's different from the actual physical device, the PF, that can be split into multiple VFs, and you assign a VF into a, a virtual machine. When I talk, this this state machine here is applicable to the virtual function, not the device, the physical device itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Ovio, this is the RISC-5 secure IO specification, and I want to emphasize that this is, uh, I'm driving this together with someone else from Intel, Jiwen, who could not attend this, this conference, but I think it's interesting that Intel is driving a RISC-5 uh, hardware specification. <laughs> just in case. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> It's not a typo. That's what I mean. <laughs> and and to uh, to um, uh, unlike IBM, we're we're trying to not do things differently. We're trying to be <laughs> very very boring. We're trying to to do what other well, if, when we think other architecture do a reasonable thing, we try to to follow the same same uh, uh, things. So we're trying to be very standard and and boring basically. So what I mean by this is that uh, uh, this is. A, overloaded diagram, but we only support PCI devices. Uh, we talk to the, 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 P, the PCI device is the, the link between the, sorry, the function, not the device, the link between, actually the link between the, the device and the host is secured through IDE, which is another PCI specification. Uh, the, the, the TSM, uh, the, the, the TSM talks to the, to the physical device through something called uh, SPDM. So it authenticates and connects to the device, establish an SPDM session. And then use SPDM as a transport for sending TDISP. I just talked about TDISP. For sending TDISP um, requests and, and getting the responses. So PCI, TDISP, SPDM, all standards. And I think this is pretty much what AMD, Intel, and, and AMD and Intel actually are doing as well. Yeah. What ID stands for? So ID, uh, I don't know the, uh, I don't know, SPDM is, yeah, it, 
it's a letter soup. I don't, I don't know, but the, uh, it's basically a way to to establish a, a secure logical channel between two two endpoints, and it's used in in many different use cases. And in that case, it's for establishing secure encrypted uh, replay protected uh, channel between the TSM and the DSM, which is basically the firmware running in the physical device. You establish an SPDM session, and you have a logical encrypted replay replay uh, uh, protecting link between your TSM, your firmware, whatever you, is running your computational computing uh, uh, platform, and the device. And then IDE is the physical link protection, uh, the, the PCI physical link protection. So you want to protect that as well for physical attacks. Uh, and and the, the Cove IO is, is a set of, uh, two set of ABIs, the host ABIs, which runs between the TSM and the host VMM, and the guest ABI, which runs between the TSM and the, the, the confidential VM itself. So most of the specification is basically about defining those ABIs and the flows related to it. So ABIs and flows. Uh, ABIs and flows, uh, the flow, the very high level flow is to go from connect. Connect is basically the, the host VMM assigning a virtual function into the confidential VM. And by doing so, it, it asks the, the TSM to establish this SPDM session that I just talked about between itself and the physical device. So now you have a like protecting link that you can use to do the binding, which is basically about binding a specific virtual function within, within this physical uh, uh, device to a TVM. Once you've done that, it's all from, all happens from the host. The host has bound a virtual function into a TVM, but the, the TVM is the one actually deciding if it's worth, if, if, the, if this virtual function is trustworthy or not. To do that, it's gonna run at the station if it wants to, and eventually call it into a guest ABI going from the confidential VM into the TSM to tell the TSM, yes, I'm accepting this device into my TCB, please start it. And by start, it means please move the virtual function from locked TDISP to run TDISP. When the virtual function moves to run TDISP, basically means it's gonna be, be able to do DMA and it's gonna be uh, accepting TLPs and doing MMIO into, into the device. So you can configure the device and the device can reach, read and write your, your, your confidential memory. So yeah, the, that's the flow. I'm running out of time, I guess. So that was <laughs> that was a, a a good introduction here, and in fact, you'll, you're, this is almost the same flows, but with different words. Um, <clears throat> so, so this diagram shows essentially what a, an untrusted device looks like whenever we're uh, we need a a device to touch. Um, we need a device to touch a guest memory. Um, we can't allow the guest to be able to. Uh, we can't allow the device. To be able to touch um, guest private memory, and so we have to bounce buffer that through uh, shared pages, and so what it's chewing up is uh, a processor time to move, copy, move, make that copy. So, <clears throat> TIO and TDISP in general is trying to essentially eliminate that problem, um, uh, that 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 bounce buffering. So, by allowing this binding operation between a device and a guest we can eliminate the bounce buffer because the device, once attested to and, and accepted by the guest, the device can touch private memory directly. <clears throat> so here are the, the different words. Um, so uh, essentially what happens here is that we have a device connection that happens and that's when our SPDM session is set up. And then the guest can be launched before or after this happens. But there is a, is a time in, in the life cycle of the device and the guest where the, uh, the, the TDI is bound to that guest. And that's done through a, a firmware command we call bind. And then once the bind operation happens, um, the guest has uh, an opportunity to check the attestation reports and the configuration of the device. And it will do that during, the, uh, during this flow in the bottom here where the guest does the attestation checking and then it will validate, for instance, the, the MMIO ranges are appropriately mapped into the guest. Um, and then it will also turn DMA on after attestation to say, hey, now I'm gonna allow 
that that device to uh, touch my memory. Um, <clears throat> one interesting, I suppose, distinction between the previous slides and this is that the AMD flow will uh, and go straight from the unlocked state to the run state because we will rely on the hosts IOMMU and RMP checks to prevent uh, uh, MMIO and DMA maliciously attacking the guest, which is, you know, we, we don't rely on the device to, 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 to prevent that. <clears throat> so PCI traffic, uh, it's, it's, it's built from this IDE, you know, two. We have, uh, we have the IDE stream that we talked about. It's keyed by our, our security processor, the TSM. Um, for us, it's the ASP, the AMD security processor. Um, and these keys are set up at device connection time. And there's one rough, there's basically a global IDE stream for an entire physical device. And so all traffic is gonna flow between the host hardware and the, get, and the, the, the physical device over this IDE stream. <clears throat> Um, so we also want to enable a uh, secure M uh, MMIO. So we want to make sure that the MMIO ranges given to the guest are actually mapped to the right places, that we're actually touching the device that we, we intend to, touching the TDI that we intend to. And the security processor is going to provide uh, this TDISP interface report that will describe uh, the, the locations of these bars to the guest and validation happens there to make sure that that, that checks out. And then we have secure DMA. So we have, we, we have a, a way to tell the IOMMU through programming a device table entry, um, a secure device table entry, that, which is a new data structure that we're, dealing, we're, we're, we're going to be introducing that enables DMA and allows the guest to program the guest specific fields of the device table, um, which include its, its uh, page table pointers and uh, other things. And, the guest will provide that data to the uh, security processor and the security processor will program that on behalf of the guest. And that once you program that, it, DMA is ready to go. I think that's it. Awesome, can I ask yes. okay. <laughs> um, Quick question, like, like seeing your slides again and getting, getting a flashback about uh, Trusted I.O. Flashback. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a flashback, I think, from, from KVM4, right? Yeah. Same slides, um, or similar, similar at least, uh, same concept. Uh, the the main thing I'm, I'm pondering about right now is what prevents me as malicious device from replaying an attestation that is non good. Um, the 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 device can't in uh, so if it's a bad device. I'm I'm a I'm a bad device that also implements TIO. Mm -hmm. I basically copy I, I I license the IP blocks to allow me to authenticate yada yada, and then instead of giving you the attestation that would you're, you're actually your report is signed by. By whom? The device manufacturer. Well, yeah. I'm the device manufacturer, and I just copy the. If you, if I, I copy the. Manufacturer, you, 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 you key the link. Oh. Yeah, it does. No, so, so I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm building an FPGA. That FPGA is a man in the middle, maybe. I don't know something. So, this is like the CA infrastructure. So the question you've just asked <laughs> is, what if there's a bad CA in the infrastructure? And the answer is, well, everything falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. So Acme Device Co has their own root CA that's going to sign all of its device identity keys. So the attestation also includes another crypto key that then becomes the actual data encryption key. So without... It's not a, I mean, it's a signing key. It's like a, an attestation key on well, the but device. It's just a signing key, the encryption key that actually plays... Okay, but I, what I'm... No, it's not like TLS. That's the main but problem. It's like TLS. It's the same as like TLS. It's a secure key exchange, a secure and key exchange protocol. So just now, instead of TLS certificates, you exchange this. This uh, SPDM uh, provides you to exchange this, you know, measurements, the certificate chains, and so on. Okay, so you use the attestation and something in the attestation, some public key, to then do the actual encryption afterwards. So the, 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 the SPDM allows you... In the ephemeral key, yeah. Yeah, allows you to, to generate this ephemeral key. That only I, if I actually have the private side of this, can use. <laughs> Okay. Certificates to authenticate yeah. and PC, uh, to, uh, oh. Yeah, that's identical to TLS, authentication, ephemeral key. Okay. 
it's not as simple as that. SPDM covers both. Sorry, get this first. SPDM covers both, but you're correct that there is a, you're using the certificates to sign the attestation reports. Uh, once that's done, the other thing you're doing is setting up a bunch of ephemeral keys. If you get into TDISP, you're setting up three layers of ephemeral keys, all of which are post over the previous layer as you authenticate your way up. Um, only when you get to that point can you do some of the key setup for the encryption of the link and all that sort of things. It's an amazingly nested so stack you, of encryption. The, the only way to accept a, a device into UTCB, like a malicious device into UTCB, is if someone has managed to actually steal a credit key from the device manufacturer and put it into your phone. And if that's the case, everything falls apart. Yep. No, okay. Not even that, you can pin. Not even just steal from the device manufacturer, but you can also pin the cert of, oh, this is the device that I expect in this piece of hardware. And unless I have some uh, some evidence that I intended for some tech to change this card and this machine and this rack, uh, then it's pen you can pin it for the lifetime of the machine. So it's it's not even like a, uh, well, it shouldn't be a uh, break once, break everywhere. I mean, obviously, if you yeah, steal yeah, yeah. the root CA keys from the, Manufacturer, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I want to call time on this discussion so I can hijack the discussion for my questions. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> and also, I didn't have an Intel slide to precursor. I'm, I'm not AMD. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I should start off by saying I'm not supposed to be here. Like, I'm, I'm the CXL maintainer. Uh, I guess I got an MMAP flag up once, and so people think I can go and uh, wrangle other things upstream. But I'm, but I'm basically I'm basically here to help wrangle uh, some of the stuff upstream. But I wanted to step back and ask uh, or, or pose some framing questions about. So you you, you saw you saw the Risk Five thing, you saw the AMD thing. I, I'm not going to touch the uh, SRI anything. But but the the Risk Five and the the Risk Five and the AMD thing look look, look similar to what Intel is building. And I, and I and I didn't I didn't have the same level of detail slides as Jeremy. But I, that's kind of the point. I don't want everybody to have to under like. If the entire community has to speak, are you talking about risk? Are you talking about AMD? Are you talking about Intel? Like, we, we won't progress as a community. Like, we, I, I think the complexity will kill us. Um, but the framing question I, I started off with was like, what if there was a standard across vendors? Like, wouldn't that be grand? The the, the problem is we're not there. Um, uh, these things these things have high amounts of momentum that have, have already have already occurred. So the next question is 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 what do we do? Um, and but also, given that there's like there's some fundamental complexity that we all need to solve together, what's the best way to get us all in the same boat, rowing together? And so, towards getting in the same boat and rowing together, I wanted to propose some principles and feel free to question the principles. That's that's the whole point of being here. Um, but the principles for me were, of all these, now that we have like several examples, we can evaluate and look at them and say, what. Of all the primitives these things offer, like what is the coarsest grain one? And where coarsest grain to me means like the least amount of complexity exported to Linux, because I care about solving customer problems without doing a lot of work myself. Um, so like the more we can push, the more we can push into what the platform provides, uh, that feels that feels like a better starting point for the community. So uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the solutions and evaluating them on, on coarseness. <laughs> And then in terms of making progress, like there's a lot of use cases that people want to do with these things. And and I want to say like, we'll get to those, but we want to pick one and, and, and it's going to be, and we should pick like one that's ruthlessly simple. And it, basically where almost everybody's crying, like this is not going to cover everything, but it's going to get us to the point where we can say, phase two is we increment from this foundation versus trying to get everything into the foundation. So people like to call it minimum viable, minimum viable product, but it's kind of the kernel Kernel enabling golden rule of like do the simplest thing first and then add features. So that, that's what I mean by being ruthlessly simple. Um, so I drew some pictures of what I think ruthlessly simple looks like. Also, I, I must say that like like it, 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 this isn't simple, <laughs> but it, but it, it, it's it's uh, declaring like where where things belong, and so uh, like if you and and the and, and the good news is, like, uh, I took a look at what what AMD was was doing and like where they do IDE key management, and I, I looked at where kind of TDX had it in, in the first instance, and TDX kind of had it in a place where some of the key management was in in the VMM and and quite kind of coordinated with the TSM. So the proposal is, hey, hey, that's too fine grained. 
that's doesn't that doesn't satisfy our first coarse grain principle let's move that below the tsm boundary so with like that when you understand that the ide key management happens in the tsm for amd you also understand that ide key management happens in the tsm for intel and we don't have to have upstream discussions about why why is this detail le leaking out we can push it below this tsm boundary so the TSM key management, just to, to, to make sure I, I get it right. Yeah. TSM key management is basically policy, right? TSM key management means these are the devices I believe I should accept. Well, let, let, so let, let, let me define what a TSM is. So TSM to me is, is, is it's also the term that TDS use, but it's uh, the TDS specification uses, but it's basically the the platform component that is able to, that that the VMM is going to trust to set up secure relationships with, with devices and Provide you reports, and it's going to be the, the the communication interface. On and correct me if I'm wrong. On on AMD, the, the TSM is the PSP. They, they have the security processor with a firmware interface that's been there forever, and and and, and it grew some TDS like capabilities. Um, I, I I don't if risk is more like TDX or or, or is it, it's like, like yeah more like yeah the, TSM a software software a software TSM oh, open source open source well oh, like open source project or open source. Open Okay, <laughs> yeah. to me, there's a difference between almost a project, almost source. But anyway, but so the T, so this TSM boundary is is should be, we should have the same verbs going up to uh, to the to the VMM to to bind. And so w when we're talking about these verbs, are things like you, you both you both said the word connect. Uh, I, like let's agree, connect is the established SPDM uh, setup IDE uh, verb. And then we have we both have the concept of bind. Bind happens from the host side. We everybody agree that bind is the verb we're going to talk to the TSM. So it's basically going down the line and and defining these verbs uh, across vendors and and then asking vendors that come along and say, hey, can we leak this detail above the line? And we say, well, no. Like this, this is it, it, we can have discussions about is this above or below the TSM boundary? Um, I I do think there's going to be, of course, there's going to be glue layer. Talk, like so, in in this slide, I have like a it probably isn't big enough for the whole room. Um, so the green the green box is the TSM thing. Um, it has an SPDM uh, kind of initiator in it. One of the one of the common things about these TSMs is even though the AMD thing is like a a, a, process, a secret processor, I, I guess I don't know if it's it's not powerful enough or I don't know, but it basically ended up with same problem that TDX had, where we don't we didn't want that thing to be doing the actual uh, MMIO to do the config cycles. It actually comes out to, into a, a service in the VMM where the, the TSM says, hey. Send a send an SPDM message uh, with with this payload. The VMM sends it and then hands it back to the hands it back to the TSM. So, it's like so like like the 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 first level of, of what we need to do to support TSMs is we need to have this SPDM dispatcher. We need to help some of these restricted execution environments affect things in in the host. Um, and uh, on the, I also had another dispatcher over there that. Uh, when, I want to call it out as as a a way to uh, more quickly handle some of the some of the TSM details on on the on the TDX side, which is, hey, inside. So the T, the TSM on Intel is actually a the TDX module, which you may, which you may have heard about, and then there's something else called this TPA TD, which is like a, it's a it's a it's a helper it's a helper guest that's going to do some goes going to do some TSM operations basically admitting that the TDX module can't do everything we need another trusted component in the system but that we can hopefully but that the plan is to encapsulate this behind the TSM uh, so that you don't have to worry about worry about those details but that thing might need to make calls into the TDX module that we might similar to how we have an SPDM dispatcher we might need to have a command dispatcher i i, I don't know if, if risk 5 needs something like that as well I think one of the limitation and why you need a, a, a separate TD is, is because the, the TDX model is not interruptible. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's a limit execution environment. Yeah, so you, you don't want to have it generate keys or that kind of things. And that's why you have a separate TD. Right, right. Uh, RISC-5 is different. Yeah, it's, it's interruptible. So okay. we don't need like a separate operation. Yeah, yeah. So so the, the whole point of the discussion was to run out of time so that you didn't have questions. But we're, we're going to have a boff, a boff tomorrow to go into the details. But that was the framing I wanted to get across the I, I still want to ask about the policy part. Okay. Um, so you have this TSM module there, right? <laughs> 
that is going to eventually have to decide whether to accept the PCI device or not. No, the, no, the, no. The, the the TSM job is really just to be an inter, a trusted inter, who, intermediary. Who, who decides when to trust? The, 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 the guest. The guest decides. They want to trust the device. Guest is the is the the host assigns the device into to the guest. The host assigns the device into the guest. The guest sees the device, but it it makes the final decision of accepting it or not, and it makes that decision and communicates it to the TSM. And accepting is binary. Is what? Accepting is binary. Like either I don't accept this device, yeah. and that means I cannot use it, yes. or I accept the device, and then I basically give it all secrets I ever had. It, it's it's not defined. So we this is something that we're working on. We need we need to create those ABIs for the guest to actually tell do I accept or reject or something else in between. This is open for discussion. This is why we're here. Okay. But it's the the decision is is done by the guest. The guest is the final decider on. on yeah. Yeah. Tedious leaves that leave, leave that implementation defined. Like as far as Tedious is concerned, like once it's in the yeah, run state, it's like exactly. As far it's as Tedious is concerned, is is yeah, it's binary. It's yes or no. Yeah. That's right. We're ending this discussion here, but we have a buff tomorrow. When?